All right, well, good morning. Uh, first of all, I am a missionary to the Philippines, and uh, we could always use missionaries there. About 110 million people in, a, in, in about three major islands that are slightly larger than Arizona. That's kind of like what the Philippines is like, sort of tropical, never snow there, so definitely out of the element here. And it's freezing, it's been freezing since September. Gets about 75 degrees is the coldest. And uh, Pastor Armacost and uh, Brother Jake has some handouts, study notes for those who need it, don't have it. So, all right, I think we're, we're good with that. Uh, prayer cards, uh, if you grab one of these or at the front desk and you remember to pray for us, it will accomplish what its purpose is. And uh, for the children, there's activity sheets here. You can color it. Oh. And uh, Marsha made this. There's word search and facts about the Philippines and information and that kind of stuff. So just to keep you thinking about the Philippines. And pray, ask God if he would have you come over, and uh, that'd be fantastic. We'll take care of you as long as you're in good standing. Uh, we'll take care of you, and you'll be busy and do a lot of great things for the Lord. And uh, it'll be an education, no doubt. Uh, let me just say, if you feel the Lord is calling you to the mission field, just keep your heart open and keep it tender towards the Lord. And don't make any uh, uh, immediate decisions. Uh, just know that if God has that for you, it'll happen at the right time as long as you're tender hearted towards God and uh, you don't get distracted by other things. Uh, same with the ministry. If you're if you feel a desire in your heart to pastor a work or to become a pastor someday or whatnot, or an evangelist or preacher, teacher, just keep your heart tender. And don't, uh, don't make any solid decisions until, it's, until you've had adequate time. Time. So there's something about time that you can't shortcut. There's just something about experience. And so make sure you don't make commitments too early but make those commitments at the right time. And so, all right, uh, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, I'm excited about this topic because I love to read. Uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, if you're going to be a, a, a pastor, preacher, teacher, missionary, you're going to have to be a reader. Uh, I, I didn't grow up being a reader. I grew up playing video games. I grew up uh, worldly as all get out, and uh, is, uh, it was probably around uh, my senior year in high school that I became a little more serious about study, but my sophomore year in Fairhaven Baptist College is where I really, uh, it, it clicked, it clicked. All those required readings, I'm like, ah, why do we have to read all this? And <laughs> uh, textbook here and textbook there, I'm like, no! <laughs> and, uh, but then uh, the Bible became much more interesting and uh, the Spirit of God used those things to show me truths from Scripture and uh, I know I'll be talking about books and I'll say it but if I don't say it now I might forget so this is the most important book in all of the world and there's no other book like this so all these books that I'll be sharing with you, highlighting, promoting, I have some books to give away and uh, for a small fee. I'm kidding, no. There's no small fee. But all these books, these are all secondary. Secondary. Keep this on the top. And by the way, uh, don't correct this book. Don't criticize this book. The Bible says uh, it's the word of God that's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even into the dividing asunder, soul, spirit, bones, marrow, joints, marrow, or whatever. So this is what criticizes us. When we open the word of God, this book examines our hearts and tells us where we are wrong so that we can get right with God. All right? So we don't tell this that it's wrong. And that's where a huge problem is with a lot of biblical Bible teachers, including these resources and secondary sources. 
they come to a point where they're like, well, you know, uh, the Greek actually says this. And then, you know, it's like, look, if I go to your house and your mom makes biscuits, you know, do we have some moms who know how to make biscuits? Can I see your hand? If your mom knows how to make biscuits, testify. <laughs> All right, I'm not talking those Pillsbury, you know, <laughs> those are pretty good too. I mean, I like those too. So you got some moms who knows how to make biscuits. So when you invite us to your home and we sit down on your table and we're like, well, you know, this biscuit could use a little salt. What would you think of that guy? You know, this biscuit's great, but you know, it could use a little more time in the oven. <laughs> that would go like a ham sandwich on a Jewish picnic, right? <laughs> that, that'd go over like a lead balloon, right? Yeah. So I'm just saying this. When you study the Bible, be careful not to criticize the Bible, but rather uh, receive the truth. This book is to be received, not criticized. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, uh, we'll read the scriptures and we'll pray and then we'll get into the lesson and we'll get you out of here on time, Lord willing. 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Let's pray and ask God to bless. And Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for Fairhaven Baptist College, where young people who feel called to the ministry or some even searching out your will. I pray, Father, that you would make our time here profitable, Lord. I pray that it would be an encouragement to the student body and to those that are interested in digging into your word. I pray, Lord, that uh, uh, they would um, take heed to these things, these warnings and these uh, uh, pointers. And, Father, I pray that you would do your work in our hearts, uh, help us from uh, being distracted and uh, uh, different kinds of thoughts and uh, priorities. Help us to prioritize now. Help us, Lord, to pay attention, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So if I were to ask you, what book of the Bible really moved you, really moved your soul? Uh, as you read the scriptures, there's got to be a book or maybe a couple books that really uh, God dealt with you about it. Maybe you got saved reading it or something like that. Uh, how many of you would say maybe like the book of John? Can I see your hand? You, your favorite book? Book of John. Let me see your hand. All right. Usually the book of John. All right. How about Psalms? Man, Psalms is something that really speaks to your heart. Okay, how about Obadiah? <laughs> Any Obadiahs? I want to see your hand. All right, why not? Why not Obadiah? Why not Hosea? How come Psalms? You know, how come John? Isn't all scripture given by inspiration of God? Isn't all scripture profitable? It sure is. And so I, I guess I'd like to say that we need to get to the point where we are familiar with Obadiah and we are familiar with Deuteronomy and we do know the content of Leviticus and uh, that, the, that all of Scripture would someday move you. All Scripture, every one of them, books of Moses, Kings, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, Nothing is more powerful than the Word of God. The Holy Scriptures, this book bears the authority of God Himself. It is inspired, preserved. It is the final rule of authority, faith, and practice. I mean, if, if a man tells you something that doesn't line up with the Scriptures, you disregard the man. But you need to understand the Scriptures. And this is where... It can, it, can, it can cause problems. So the first requirement is you need to be saved. In order to understand this book, you need to come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You need to repent of sin and trust in Him. Turn from sin and take Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, the natural man, receive not the things of the Spirit of God, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 2.14. Then you need to be surrendered to the Lord. Saved, surrendered. Other, you know, if you're living a carnal, worldly life, uh, you won't get anything out of this book. I mean, if the world is just consuming you 
And this book is not going to consume you. I guess there's a saying, right? Sin will keep you from this book or this book will keep you from sin. So yes, saved. Yes, surrendered. But let me just also say you need to study it. Let me say it again. You need to study the Bible. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 13, the Bible says, And Philip ran thither to him, talking about the Ethiopian treasurer, and heard him read the prophet Esaias, which is Isaiah, and said, unto, uh, said um, Understandest what thou readest. Understandest what thou readest. What he's saying is, do you understand what you're reading? Do you understand what you're reading? So, uh, take for example Psalm. Go to the book of Psalms. And uh, let's take a, a look at here. <clears throat> Psalm number four. You see underneath the number Psalm, you should have these writings. To the chief musician on Neganoth, a Psalm of David. Well, we know what, uh, who the chief musician is, perhaps. We have those scriptures that will tell us who that is. But what is a Neganoth? Does anybody know what a Neganoth is? Anybody? Okay, we got one guy. Good, I'm glad you do. Hang on. Look at Psalm 5. There's, to the chief musician, Nehaloth. Anybody know what a Nehaloth is? Except for one guy. Hang on. I want to make a point here. Oh, another guy. Amen. It's good. Um, if you deal with let's say a Muslim, and they say, what is a Neganoth? It's in your Bible. Are those words important? Are they just translator's notes? No, they're not. That, if you go to the Hebrew Masoretic text, those words are part of the inspired words. And you're studying the Bible. You need to know what that means. Go to, uh, let's look at First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Uh, let's see here. Chapter 1. First Chronicles chapter 1. This one's a lot easier. First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 1. Adam, Seth, Enosh. That's easier, right? Okay, so we all know who Adam is. We all know who Seth is. Who's Enosh? Correct, it's Enoch. So, uh, but are these names important? Is it worthy of study? Do people need to know the background? Who is Adam? Who is Seth? Who is Enosh? And why is it important to the, to the scriptures to get an understanding of the scriptures? Or can we just skip it? Can we just skip it because we don't think it's important? It's all important. Remember, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So there are some biblical background that as you preach and teach, you need to bring that forth. You need to bring that out as you counsel, as you advise, as you, as you instruct. You don't just crack open the scriptures and, and, and um, assume that your auditors or your listeners understand what you're talking about. Isn't that a great skit? We need help and we need tools to understand these words at times. Now, for the majority of the scriptures, 90 some uh, 99% of this is understandable. And there's that little bit there that you're going to need help with. And uh, God didn't deposit all the knowledge in one guy or a few guys. He, he saw fit to... Uh, diversify and it's up to us to mind these things mind the truths of scripture all right and uh, understand the historical background of a text cultural background of a text geographical information oh let's go to uh, first Samuel you guys like David and Goliath right the story of David and Goliath I mean who doesn't like that fantastic story 1 Samuel 17, verse number 1. 
1 Samuel 17, verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shokoth. Like, where is that at? Anybody know where that's at? <laughs> Except for those who've been to Israel. Ate, ate falafel and felt awful. <laughs> and uh, belongeth to Judah and pitched between Shokoth and Azekah. And this one's great. Ephazdamim. Like, you know, so do you just skip over that, not explain that? Or does that bear looking into, finding out where it's at, explaining, showing, demonstrating, so that the person that, that you're trying to reach can understand the scriptures? These are important things. They're put there. Not one word is by accident. So there is also linguistic backgrounds and information that we need to look into. Part of our task as preachers and teachers of the Word of God is to bring people to the Word. That's what we're trying to do. When we open the Scriptures, we're introducing them into a, another world. And so we bring the Word of God to people, and then we also bring people to the Word of God. <clears throat> His Word is worthy of study. Remember what Jesus said in John 5.39, Search the scriptures. Search it. You know, that word search means to seek. It means to investigate. It, it bears studying, looking into. Uh, and in Ecclesiastes 12 talks about how wearisome uh, study could be. Work could be very wearisome. And uh, I know a lot of pastors would rather do things than get in the Word of God, and as a result of that, their people are famished spiritually. Because the pastor himself is famished spiritually. Remember this, the barometer of a local congregation is the pastor. If he's on fire for God, the church will be on fire for God. It's just like that. It's like a home. If the daddy's on fire for the Lord, the family will be on fire for the Lord, for the most part. And uh, so, this is the standard of truth, the word of authority. Are you willing to sacrifice and labor in the word of God to mind the things of God? Or is this going to remain a strange thing, as Hosea talks about? I've written to you great things out of my law, Hosea 8.12, and you have counted it as a strange thing. Great things out of the law, but we count it strange things. Are we worthy of this? We don't endorse any or all of what the authors write and secondary sources here. We acknowledge them as being gifted, worthy laborers of the sacred word of God. We enter into their labors and we're so thankful for their hard work and labor. Um, we desire to learn from them the things that we can. Uh, we don't, uh, don't uh, want to underestimate that. Uh, but... Uh, if you come to a verse or scripture passage that you don't understand and you've looked it up and they can't explain it, you just need to receive the truth of the Word of God. There are some things that we can't understand, but we're to receive it by faith. I mean, how, who, who among us can understand the Trinity? For real, like, you know. I mean, if God didn't reveal himself that way to us, we wouldn't know. We'd come up with our own gods. And so we can't understand it completely. There's not a book outside of this book here that can explain the Trinity. Uh, so what do you do with that? Receive that truth by faith. Believe it. All right? Lean not to your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5 talks about trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. So here's your notes here. Um, these kind of books facilitate an understanding of the Holy Bible. This is the whole goal. We just want to understand what the Bible says. And so uh, we need to know the content of the scriptures and the context of the scriptures. So these tools are resources uh, um, to consider. All right, I think this here is called the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. And you have this at the Fairhaven Library. Uh, before I run out of time and all that kind of stuff, I do have to say this. Um, when you borrow a book from the library, you got to think not just about yourself, 
but all the others who would like to. So treat it nicely. Return it promptly and uh, respect it. Don't put dog ears on this kind of stuff and highlight it and do, <laughs> it's not yours, right? So respect, respect it. Uh, then, so there's International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. I, I think this is the, one of the best tools for study of the scriptures. I think all the person, places, and uh, uh, the scriptures are mentioned or referenced here. This is the older edition, 1915. This came out. This one was revised. Um, I need my notes, too. So I move that here. All right. So this was uh, 1979. It's a 43-year-old book. It's 1915. It's like ancient, you know. Uh, and between the two of them, there are archaeological discoveries of recent times that will be in here that wasn't in here. Thankfully, both of these have digital copies. And you have apps that can actually download them on your phone. Smartphone. Dumb user. All right. So uh, talking about Shokoth, talking about those places, look him up on uh, in, in Isby. Um, there's one called the Treasury of, of Knowledge. What is this? Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. This one's interesting. Every verse, every line, every verse has a chain reference to another portion of Scripture. With this tool, you literally have Scripture interpreting Scripture. Condensed for you, put together to you by Blaney, the guy who revised the 1611 Turn it to the 1769, which is what we're using pretty much. And so these guys know what they were doing. I have a treasury of scripture knowledge over there. Uh, let's see. Where's Cooper? Dr. Cooper. Brother Cooper, can you grab that one? All right. We'll give that out. We got to give it out. So uh, let's do some sword drills. Let's do a sword drill. So if you're interested... And this, let's do a sword drill. No, uh, Brother Cooper, it's right over there. Yeah, that stash is my giveaway stash. Treasury Scripture, you got it? Because this one's the library. I can't give this away. I'll be in trouble. I have to turn in my library card. All right, Scripture's up. Let's see. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, someone find Ecclesiastes 12.12. 12. Go! First person. Ecclesiastes 12.12. 12. Get up. Yep, yeah, say it. Up. Oh. Right there. Wait, what did you say? Yeah, okay. I'll take your word for it. All right. So this here is a cross-reference of cross-references. Tremendous tool. All right. This is the Satellite Bible Atlas. I don't have this to give away. But uh, the Satellite... Bible Atlas is basically NASA took satellite photos of the Bible land and it has uh, lots of good geographic information and notes on the side. This is one of the greatest tools. And then online, if you purchase this book, they give you a link and you can download these maps and other maps and more maps. It's fabulous. So uh, you have that in the, the Fairhaven Library. Uh, let's see. Do I have uh, Tori's topical? You got Tori's topical. All right, let's look at uh, sword drill. All right, Hosea. Wait, oh, Bible's up. All right, if you have like a tablet or something, that's fine. Give it a try. Let's see if you're quick. I don't care. All right, let's see. Hosea 8, 12, go. Hosea 812 go. Just one for now. Right there. I have he said I have written to thee. Oh yes. This young man in the black. There you go. All right, that's Ari Tori's topical textbook. All right. Uh, let's see. One more. Uh, Second Timothy. I got another Tori's topical. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Go. I'm kidding. There's no verse. I didn't give you a verse. 
You guys are, you guys are outrageous. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number, this is why you need to listen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. Oh, I didn't say go yet. Ah, I didn't say go yet. Go. Right there. Right there. All right, let's see. It is intense, isn't it? All right, let's see. Uh, what, what else do I have there? Oh, a Greek. All right, this one's for the Greek. Uh, this one's a Greek uh, copy of the TR. So if you're into Greek and you're going to take Greek or whatnot, this one's for you, okay? Let's go with Proverbs chapter 3. Man, we got some interested in Greek folks here. Amen. Amen. That's great. 2 Timothy chapter... Good luck on your studies. Uh, I don't believe in good luck, just so you know. But good luck. Oh, man, those prepositions. and It's the verbs, the verbs. The verbs are where the action is. Isn't that great? That's true for Greek. Anyway, Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5. Go. For the TR. Right there. Good job, Gideon. All right. Amen. All right, well, who, what else do I have there? Oh, a survey, okay. All right. Um, let me back up here and show you these two books. They're going to be in your library. Pastor Coolis wrote uh, two books on the veracity of the Bible. Basically, when you read the scriptures, sometimes one book will say X amount of thousands of horses, and another would say 30,000 horses, and how you reconcile those things without correcting the Bible. That's significant because even fundamental writers will correct the Bible. And we don't want to do that. And how do you reconcile that? Well, this man made it his thesis, his study. And uh, so he wrote These So-Called Errors. Fascinating book. Fascinating book to reconcile. And he'll quote Archer, he'll quote Tory, and they all correct the Bible. But uh, he's very careful to give us uh, a very well-studied uh, information on that. In your library, you'll have it there, these so-called errors. He wrote one on the vowel points of the Hebrew, and this is significant. Uh, why, why do some people call God Yahweh? Why do some people call God Jehovah? Well, is Yahweh correct? Is Jehovah correct? Who's right? Well, it all has to do with vowel points. Are those vowel points legit? Uh, or maybe they were added later. So, uh, just so you know, there's no such language without vowels, okay? Vowels are necessary. Try speaking without any vowels and see how far you get. <laughs> You'll go nowhere. So, but it's called, One Tittle Shall in No Wise Pass. The veracity of the vowel Hebrew points, you've got to have this. And it's in your library. All right. Uh, Dr. Strauss, I think, is one of the greatest Bible commentary, commentary writers today. Um, he, uh, this one's a thousand pages on the book of Revelation. And he's got like, I know, it's like solid, you know. And he doesn't correct the Bible. He's got 3,760 footnotes. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. And uh, the finest work from a biblicist perspective on the book of Revelation. Right here. You have it in the Fairhaven Library. And some of Dr. Strauss's commentaries will be entered into the library. And so that'll be there for you. You know, when you talk about Catholics or you talk about Charismatics, you talk about Reformed theology, you ought to at least know a little bit about their background so you don't just like criticize without, uh, without knowledge. This book is called the Moody Handbook of Theology, and all it is is a summary of major, major doctrines, uh, you know, like charismatic doctrine, Pentecostal doctrine. What's the difference between a charismatic and a Pentecostal? What's the difference between Calvinism and Reformed? 
There is a difference. Isn't that interesting? This book will tell you all about it and then tell you further studies, what to consult and that kind of stuff. So it's an interesting book. And again, secondary source, not our, our doctrine, our Bible-based biblical doctrines are not represented here. But again, if you're going to deal with a, a radical theology, black liberation theology, it's covered here. Who's the mover shaker? What's the history of it? It's a good summary so that you're not flying blind and you know what's going on. And they update this ever so often. Unfortunately, there's not a biblicist one of these. <laughs> Be nice to have one of those. Maybe some of you. Maybe some of you someday will be called to write a commentary on the scriptures. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Amen. Translate the scriptures, the, those TRs and the MT to a different language. Wow. Give them the gift of the word of God. Got to start early. All right, so you have that. I got some more. F.B. Mayer, uh, uh, Mayer is a great devotional reading. I don't know how he does it. But he can read the Old Testament and pull something that you're like, wow. <laughs> you know, and uh, unfortunately, he didn't stay Baptist. Uh, and I don't understand why and all that kind of stuff. But what he wrote, as far as I know, uh, lines up with the scriptures. Are f the ones that he wrote that lines up with the scriptures are fantastic. He's a great biographer. Uh, he wrote lots of biographies. David, Moses, Abraham, and just, I know he's written it in the, 1900s, but they still reference him today. So he's fascinating read. All right, let's have uh, one more verse here. Let's see. Acts chapter 8, verse 30, go. Acts 8, 30. There you go. There you go. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, David Cloud's uh, encyclopedia. This one's the seventh edition. It's always growing. All right, let's see. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. You know, when I say go, stand up and read it. Don't like look at me and like, oh, I don't know. Do you have it? You tell me. All right, Hebrews chapter 5. You're like tickling over there laughing. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. Go. Right there. All right. Fantastic. All right. What, what are those two? Oh, the Zondervan. Zondervan Bible Dictionary. All right. Anybody want a Bible Dictionary? You just want it? Let me see your hand. All right. This young lady over here. Amen. Hey, she's going to have revival. There you go. Anybody want an Old Testament survey? This young man over there. With the, t the, yeah, that, yep. All right. Fantastic. Learn to discern. And uh, don't just follow any man blindly. Line what they say up to the scriptures. And if they don't, if they tell you these words don't mean what they mean, don't listen to them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love for us. We thank you, God, that there's a lot of young people just enthused about learning the word of God, trying to get that word in their heart. Protect them, Lord, I pray. Bless them. Help them in their studies. Help them as they serve the Lord to be prepared for the master's use. We just love you, Lord, for giving us the word of God, how worthy it is of our time, energy, effort, study, Lord. We need to get into it, understand it, so we can communicate it effectively. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.